good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing another most anticipated reads video where I read my most anticipated reads that are published in 2021 or just some books that were on the top of my TBR list, but for some reason I never got around to it. So in this video, I'll also be talking about new releases from Tessa Bailey, from authors like Laura J. Williams, and also a thriller novel as well. So I think personally with Tessa Bailey, there are a lot of fans out there and there are also a lot of readers that are on the borderline with Tessa Bailey. Most of her books are either a hit or a miss I feel like and with her books you can see a mixed review taking place but majority of the times the ratings are pretty high. So with Tessa Bailey I picked up It Happened One Summer which is her latest release that just came out in the month of July and this one I talked about in my summer reading recommendations video where I recommended it to you if you guys are a fan of characters who are a little bit shopaholic, a little bit vapid and someone who really cares about their outer appearances but has that really strong character development throughout the whole book or at least by the end of the book and now It Happened With Summer is actually based on a Canadian television show called Schitt's Creek and more specifically it's actually based on one of the characters on Schitt's Creek who is known to be very vapid and who only cares about outer appearances and about having fun and going to parties and just having the best time of her life and that character's name is known as Alexa. Now It Happened When Summer follows two sisters who are unfortunately having to be sent back to the small town that the family owns so that they can learn more about their family values and they can also learn more about growing up without having the money that they had so much of when they were actually growing up and also learning how to make a living and also being more empathetic and sympathetic to a lot of different people in the small town and that's where our main female character actually meets her love interest who is a, our hero who is actually a fisherman in the small town and he earns his living through a very dangerous occupation because ships are very dangerous. If you ever watched The Deadliest Catch on Discovery Channel then you would know what I'm talking about. Now I really had high expectations for It Happened One Summer mostly because it's testing Bailey. I loved all her novels that I've read from her. I thought that she was really great at writing. You know, I'm going to get some spicy reads too as well. And of course, all my friends were giving it really high ratings on Goodreads as well, giving it like 4.5 or 5 out of 5 stars. People were raving about this book when arcs were coming out in the beginning of this year. All I heard was just good things about this one. So obviously I had really high expectations for this book. Book. When I first started reading this book, I kind of got really annoyed with our heroine. And it comes with the fact that our heroine is not like us. We don't really relate to her as much because I'm assuming that the people who watch my videos aren't, you know, super rich and that they have really wealthy families and they have a lot of family money that they're sitting on. So our heroine only cares about her Instagram, only cares about how she appears, only cares about her like celebrity status and things like that. So it was kind of frustrating to read but you can see she is changing from someone who is vapid to someone with more substance as soon as she lands into the small town. So the character development did happen quite fast I believe and then afterwards she meets our hero who kind of sparks a enemies to lovers romance which I did appreciate but the thing that I was very disappointed in was the fact that the enemies to lovers aspect was like next to none it only took like maybe like three scenes and then after that they were best of friends so I wouldn't even say that it was an enemies to lovers romance as I thought it would be based on the synopsis of the book and based on the fact that these two characters follow the trope of grumpy and miss sunshine and also opposites attract so I was disappointed in that fact and then friends to lovers I'm okay with at most times but this friends to lover felt so platonic that when I first saw them get together I was just like you guys are just friends like I don't really care and I lacked the emotional connection to our two characters. I felt that there was no chemistry between the two characters because of this and I just wasn't impressed by this novel and halfway through I kind of got really bored because all this book focused on was like the fishing in the small town and I didn't have that like hot sensual tension that I would usually get in Tessa Bailey's novels. So unfortunately this one was a real disappointment for me and I ended up giving this one a two out of five stars. I'm sure 
sure that if I were to reread it again, it'll be a higher rating, possibly. But for now, it's going to sit as a two out of five stars and it's one of my most disappointing reads of 2021. So going back to another summer read, I was really excited to pick up the latest novel from Laura Jane Williams called The Lucky Escape. Now, Laura Jane Williams wrote this book called Our Stop. And I talked about this before in my summer reading recommendations video too as well. So I picked up The Lucky Escape thinking that I will get kind of like the same fluffy chiclet romance. So The Lucky Escape follows our main female heroine who is about to get married. She has been dating this man for many many years and all she has been thinking about is marrying him. But on the day of her wedding she finds out that he's not actually going to show up to the wedding and that he is jilting her at the altar. So now she is visibly upset and she's distraught and she gets through the day but she also realizes that her family is not always the most supportive of her. Basically the family is adding a lot more pressure and giving her more anxiety than she needs especially at a time where her fiance humiliated her and kind of ruined her life. So now our main female heroine is kind of stuck with this honeymoon ticket and she's thinking of what to do what to do when she bumps into a high school classmate that she kind of knew but she does really know and she decides to throw caution to the wind by going with him to this honeymoon and this great escape. So that's where she goes to relax and to forget about her fiance and to also learn more about herself and learn more about what makes her happy so that she can bring it back to her present world and make decisions on based on like what are the things that she wants to keep in life and what are the things that she doesn't want to keep in life. Now for this book I think there's a lot of conversation going around booktube and also in the book community that illustrative covers might not tell like the true feelings and emotions behind that book. Like sometimes you see a very cute illustrated cover and you think it's going to be very lighthearted, very fluffy, it's going to be a rom-com and that's exactly what I thought this book would be. I thought it would be like a light beach read but unfortunately I was kind of uh, lied to by this cover. Um, this one definitely held more emotional ground than I was expecting. I felt really sad and bad for our main female heroine who was jilted at the altar simply because she was really going through it. There was a lot of chapters and scenes where she is rehashing you know certain memories that she had with him and she was just like basically in a rut and it was just so sad and so depressing and I loved it for it because, you know, anytime or when a book makes you feel that emotion that you know that the author is doing a great job. It's just that this one just didn't feel like a rom-com summer read to me. So I gave this one a three out of five stars. Was I disappointed in this read? Uh, yeah, like a little bit because our stop was like a full five out of five or at least a four out of five stars for me. And this one just ended up being a three out of five stars, most because by the end of the book, um, the romance felt like it was put on the back burner and it was more focused on her life and her development. So it felt more like a woman's fiction novel, which is not bad. It's just that this one was just not the best women's fiction novel. So summer is also the season where I like to pick up a lot of thrillers for some reason or like the publishers like to publish a lot of thrillers. I guess these thrillers are like the summer thrillers and there was this one thriller that I put off for a whole entire year mostly because I was like I don't want to read it unless like I have like the perfect moment that I can read it and then I realized it's been sitting on my shelf for a whole year and I got the arc from the publisher and I just never read it so I felt like okay I need to read it now. But The Night Swim by Megan Golding is one of those thrillers that I've been putting off for the whole entire year mostly because she wrote this book called The Escape Room which I really 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 liked. So The Escape Room followed four investment bankers, four to five investment bankers who are friends but they're not and they've been like sabotaging each other for like the whole entire year because they all want to remain on the payroll because the investment bank is ready to start cutting off people. So now they are at a race of trying to be the best, to close the most deals and to earn the most money so that they don't have to get chopped off on the chopping block. They end up getting trapped on an elevator and they soon realize that their past decisions that they've made 
have changed their future. So I really like that one and I remember staying up like the whole night just reading it because I was just so captivated by the atmosphere of the book and also from the ideas of like the cutthroat financial world because if you guys didn't know I actually work in finance. But with the Night Swim I didn't know anything about it. A lot of people on Thriller Booktube actually were talking about this book when it first came out and a lot of people were highly anticipating it and they read it but I avoided those videos and maybe Maybe I should have went to go watch those videos because I think one of the biggest warnings that I would give to thriller readers out there who are just starting out or baby thriller readers is that you always have to check the reviews for trigger warnings because thrillers can get really dark. Now The Night Swim includes trigger warnings of sexual assault, rape, and just crime in general. This one is told from two different perspectives, one's in the past and one's in the present. What happened in the present time is that the golden boy in the small town has been accused of sexual assault to a female and now that female is being testified in court so that she can say her story and basically tell the jury that this golden boy is not as golden as he seems. But the small town only believes in him because he has been the star athlete of the small town and he's supposed to go to college for swimming and he's supposed to, you know, win the Olympics and he has a very, very bright future ahead of him. And a lot of people think she's lying. And then the past story follows, unfortunately, another sexual assault case where it follows a different character and her older sister. And her older sister has been tormented by a group of boys in her same grade level and that have been sexually assaulting her, but nobody believes her. So this book dealt with a lot, a lot of heavy topics that I wasn't aware of. And one of my, not trigger warnings, because I don't really get triggered by it, but I just prefer not to read about sexual assault and the trauma and like the grief that comes with it, mostly because it's just really hard to deal with. It's a very heavy read and I'm a very emotional reader. So when I read that stuff, I get weighed down and boggled down by it by a lot. So that's why I was shocked when I dove into the Night Swim and I realized that it was all about this. But because I started the book, I wanted to finish it towards the end and I wanted to see the outcome. Now this one, they say that it's a thriller, but I wouldn't say it's a thriller. I would say that it's leaning more towards like a fiction novel slash crime. Um, so it follows like crimes, obviously. There's no thrilling aspects to it. It's just literally crime. Like these people are hurting other people. They're sadistic, they're evil, and they should be punished. Megan did a really great job at like researching like the trauma that victims go through and like reiterating that back to us and telling us that like new things that I've never learned about or never thought about and it's just so good in that sense. But as a thriller it just disappointed me because it wasn't a thriller and overall for this book I gave it a three out of five stars. And then another romantic comedy that just hit the shelves this week or this month is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams and now this one is the fourth book in the Romantics book club series or whatever the bromance book club series where, where a bunch of guys who are from different sports teams come together to read romance novels to discuss like the female brain to discuss like the female problems that are having happening in their lives and just to discuss like literature and romance. I actually had a whole rant that I did with my friend one time discussing the idea behind the bromance book club and how the characters are supposed to be like book boyfriends and are supposed to be cute because like they're reading romance books to understand the female mind and to understand relationships. And meanwhile, I do think that romance books, you know, serve a good purpose like that. They can educate you to be more compassionate. They can educate you to look at, you know, different point of views and like they can educate you on like what your spouse or significant other might be feeling at the time, proper communication levels. It teaches you a lot of things, but it definitely is not a workaround of what you could be learning through proper relationship counseling or through proper research or through actual like reading like self-help books written by experts as opposed to just reading romance novels and using those romance novels as a base. Um, I just feel like that women are a lot more complicated than a romance novel and that no amount of romance novels can really tell you everything about the female mind aside from actually communicating with your spouse and instead of using like tactics you learn from fictional novels 
with females. Tangent aside, isn't it romantic is a second chance romance slash marriage of convenience trope. It follows our Russian hero that has been introduced in the first three books as the one that always has like farting issues and keeps farting out of nowhere. Um, so he's been diagnosed in the fourth book as having a lactose intolerancy and now he has weaned himself off of that so he's perfectly fine so no more fart jokes or very little fart jokes as compared to the third novel where there are so many fart jokes that it was just so nasty and it was just so childish that I just couldn't deal with it. But it falls our Russian who is supposedly married to someone but we've never met her before and the guys never really met her before until they realize that it's a marriage of convenience. She only wanted to come to America and then he married her because he thought that she, you know she would appreciate it and that maybe they can start something new and something fresh because they were childhood friends first and he always had feelings for her but then she didn't seem like she was reciprocating those feelings so he was very heartbroken by it but he's also very timid and shy so he didn't want to push her into this relationship and now she's coming back and telling him that he's she's actually moving back to Russia and she'll be getting a job there as a journalist and that this is the end and now he is like distraught and heartbroken over it because he really wanted to give the relationship a real try and to actually fall in love with her properly and now this is his story where he tries to convince her that he is the right one for her all along and then she has her own internal struggles to go get through to as well because she has a dark past and she needs to have the help of others and then meanwhile our Russian hero is also a romance author and he's a secret romance author so you get to see some tidbits of him writing his novel and you got to read excerpts of his novel too as well which is like romantic suspense and then with all Lissa K. Adam novels you'll start to see the genre of the books that they're reading in the book itself so there is going to be some thrilling and romantic suspense elements to this book as well towards the end which is really exciting. Now for this one I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it like when I was listening to the audiobook I just loved how cute our two characters were how it was so angsty and how like our two characters really liked each other but you can tell that they were really struggling with taking that one step forward and kind of wearing their heart on their sleeves and I was really waiting for them to speak up and to talk about themselves freely and openly so I really liked it and it totally exceeded my expectations because the last two books it was mediocre for me and I only gave it a three out of five stars for this one I gave it a four out of five stars and then the last book that I want to talk about is actually a paranormal historical romance it's called Breath of Magic by Teresa Medeiros now I talked about this book in my Black Sheep book recommendation video and this one follows our main female heroine who has been accused of being a witch. She's being put on trial as a witch and she could face death because of her like different personality and from her witch chantings and from her flying around on her broomstick and things like that. So she's in a lot of trouble when we first meet her and then suddenly she is transported to the wonderful year of 1996 in New York City and she has flown herself into the office of our main hero who is very grumpy and who is the tech billionaire that owns his like super uh, luxurious tech company and he is a cynic he doesn't believe in magic and he thinks that she is a con artist that has lied to him but he is not willing to let her go and to explore the new land of 1996 so he keeps her in his building for the period of time until he figures out if magic is real or not and they kind of have a very enemies to lovers romance and opposites attract romance too as well. I was really anticipated in reading this book because the synopsis really got me. I'm a huge fan of time travel romances so of course I had to read it and this one was actually recommended to me on Instagram. I thought that this one was super fun. When I was reading it I was very captivated by it because the writing was just easy to get to. It was like things that you can sink into because it's so atmospheric. This one's definitely like a fall read and I would recommend you to pick this up for the colder and wintry and fall months because it involves Halloween, it involves witches, it involves magic and it's just so beautiful. But this book also included a lot of scenes that just didn't make sense that could get confusing. Some writing of it was not really explanatory so you don't know what's actually really happening. I got confused in a lot of the parts. I felt like the scenes kind of cut too quickly and then afterwards towards the end it was just like 
oh we're going in this direction now so it did it was very iffy so i can't give this one a perfect five out of five stars even though i want to give it a five out of five stars but i'm just going to give it a four out of five stars because overall my emotional levels while reading this was really high i was very happy when i was reading it so hopefully you'll like it too but anyways that is it for all the books that i read that were my most anticipated releases and my reactions towards it how do you feel about some of the books that i talked about let me know in the comments down below but anyways i'll see you guys again next time bye <music>